Okay, so he, he's definitely speaking to a you know to an audience who does not know the Lord Jesus, right? And uh, they're all looking at uh, Peter and John, and then they're looking at the miracle that has been done, and they obviously don't know the Lord Jesus. But um, here Peter is saying, you know, this is what you need to do. You need to repent, change your ways, uh, be converted. And uh, he says that times of refreshing, you know, times or seasons of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. Okay, And uh, I know that, you know, we are a group of people who know the Lord, who, uh, you know, who have received him as Lord and Savior. Uh, but, I, but I believe this is, you know, applicable to us as well. Right? If there are some areas where we need to repent, okay, repentance we know uh, doesn't just mean you know saying the, to the Lord, "I'm sorry, Lord," uh, but it means that there's a decision that you you make a decision to turn away, you make a decision to forsake, right? Those things that on maybe displeasing to Him, um, those it could be a attitude, it could be a motive, it could be an act, it could be anything, right? It would be a uh, you know some stronghold in the mind, but this is what it is. Repent and be converted, meaning and be changed. And the Lord's promise is that times of refreshing, okay? seasons of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. Now, what is holding us back from experiencing that season of refreshing? It's that we are not repenting. Right? We are not making that change. We are not making that decision and saying, God, you know, I just want to put these things away. But the, but the Lord's intent is that we experience times, seasons of refreshing from His presence. Okay, So His presence is very um, unique. His presence is powerful. His presence is personal. And His presence is refreshing. Right? Uh, I'm sure, you know, if you've ever, uh, uh, you know, spent time with a, with a good friend, right? Just talking and he's talking and you're talking and then suddenly you realize oh wow three hours have gone where where did time go right you're not been looking at the clock you've been you've not been looking at the watch but then three hours just went because you just wanted to be there and such is the presence of the lord or probably even more than that is the presence of the lord right and seasons times of refreshing come from his presence and and all of us need that refreshing you no know, refresh in our spirits. Okay, so uh, we're just going to spend some time just praying and saying, God, you know, uh, these are areas that I need. To change, right? These are areas that where I need to repent, where I need to make a decision and say, God, you know, I am going to change. I'm going to forsake. Right, and uh, the Lord promises that times of refreshing will come from His presence. So let's do that. Let's just pray. You know, uh, take some time to talk to the Lord personally. Uh, you know, whatever's on your heart. And each of us, we know, you know, there could be maybe a attitude, maybe uh, some kind of a act, some kind of a motive, and the Holy Spirit is, you know, shining His light and He's pointing at those very things, not in a condemning manner, but in a convicting manner, so that we would take that step and say, okay, I change, I, I forsake, and the Lord wants to fill that space with His refreshing, with His presence. Right, let's let's pray. Father, we thank you. In your own words, you know, just pray to the Lord, pour out your hearts to the Lord. Say, God, you know, this is where I am. You know, that these are things that need to change within me. Yes, Lord. Yes, oh God. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I, I, I change from this, God. I make a decision, God. So, the word of God says, if we are willing, He gives us the ability, uh, meaning ability for, to for what? Ability to change, ability to forsake, right? Ability to stay away, ability to even take on certain things, right? Um, so, repenting doesn't mean just always forsaking, but which, which means that we need to take on some things, um, maybe uh, you know something that the Lord wants us to do instead of what we are doing. So it means to take on certain things. And so repentance is that also saying, oh God, you know, I have been 
hesitating i've been resisting uh, to take on these things um, it could come in the form of uh, you know maybe a responsibility a calling uh, certain steps that we need to take you know even that is repentance saying god yes i i take on these things god um, i commit to this lord right so as we do that the word of god declares the times of refreshing father god we come before your presence father god as we are lord lord we thank you for speaking to our hearts god and lord even as we lord make those decisions god uh, make those choices father god to either lord change and forsake or to change and take on god um in a, as an act of repentance lord lord we thank you that you promise that uh, times and seasons of refreshing come from your presence god we just pray that you would pour out your spirit in them in them in, in immeasurably oh god a different manner god a great manner god uh, even today lord for us lord right now god uh, let our hearts be refreshed father god let our bodies and minds be refreshed oh god in your presence oh father god yes lord whatever is uh, hindering us oh god i pray whatever is bothering us lord we pray will be taken away will be broken lord whatever is keeping us ensnared in chains oh god let it be broken father god and whatever mm -hmm. limits are there barriers are there ceilings oh god that we have put on ourselves lord let it be broken oh god even today master yes father god we thank you we say yes to you lord jesus we say yes to you lord jesus yes oh god we thank you we thank you lord we thank you for your work deep work in our hearts master we thank you that you love us we thank you that you're leading us god from where we are to where we should be lord we thank you for empowering us oh father god we thank you for lord assuring us of your presence father god we thank you for assuring us of your power oh god in our lives master lord we we pray even today that uh, even as we open our hearts god we pray that you would speak to us lord speak to us in ways that only you can oh god speak to us lord okay you know we been, last class we studied about hearing the voice of the lord right hearing the voice of the spirit so we're just going to take some time to spend some time to to do that right intentionally press in to do that and say lord you speak lord give us a word give us a burden um lord whatever it is in whatever way you want to do that maybe through a word maybe through something visual that you're prompting maybe uh something that you're impressing upon our hearts but god today this morning in prayer we are asking we are seeking you god we are seeking you first god we are putting you first oh god we are seeking you with all sincerity lord and lord we pray that you would impress upon our hearts speak to us direct us guide us lord now let's take some time to do that Thank you, God. Just be mindful of what the Spirit of the Lord is doing. Maybe he is quickening a scripture. Maybe he is, uh, you know, doing anything, you know, any of that thing. But uh, just be mindful of that. And, uh, you know, in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Maybe there's a release of joy in your heart. Um, maybe there's a, a release of unexplainable peace, you know, a peace that passes understanding. Uh, and so, you know, just be mindful of that and receive that. You know, let's be in a receiving mode today, right now. Say, God, I receive from you. I receive from you, God. Even as I give my heart to you, Lord, I receive from you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. And um, those of us who are online, you know, I just want to request you to do the same, right? Uh, take some time wherever you are, uh, just to seek the Lord. Say, oh God, um, you know, with all intensity, with all fervency, and say, Lord, you speak, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Um, 
just do that with a hunger, with a passion. You know, um, was um, and even if you're feeling down in your spirit, just stir yourself up. Say, I stir myself up. I position myself um, in His presence. I position myself um, in the presence of the Lord and uh, to receive. I prepare my heart to receive. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you for your work in our hearts, your work in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're the God of the here and now. Real and authentic God. You're the one who speaks in the here and now, God. We just want to thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your assurance, God. Thank you for drawing us to your side. Lord, may we continue to walk with you by your side. Lord, always aware, Father God, that you are speaking to us, that you're drawing us, that you have good things in store for us. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, I just want to open up this time. Um, if there's anything that you sensed, anything that um, maybe for the class, maybe for someone here and uh, online um, class, you know, same thing. You know, if there's a scripture that was quickened to your heart, something that you saw, you can just put it on the chat so that I can share it here with the uh, in-person class also. So anything at all, uh, you can share. Okay. Any, anyone? Anything? Uh, what you sensed, what you felt impressed in your heart, um, yeah, to do that. Um, yeah, Rinchen, you want to share something? No. If it's uh, if it's something personal, then you don't have to. But then, if it's something that you feel that, go ahead. Mm. Okay, so it's a mirror, and then light shining on a mirror, and then light reflected. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And uh, yeah, so Rinchen shared that, um, saying that she. So you saw this, you sensed this. You saw okay, something visual, mirror, light shining on the mirror, light dispersing, and message being that, okay, the way I've shown my love to you, you share the love with others. Praise God. Anyone else? Um, yeah, Prince. Okay. Okay. So this is something that you saw or sensed. You heard. Okay. Okay. So this is Prince here. So um, what he heard uh, in your heart, right? It's a, a cup that we uh, for the cup to be a cup needs to be overflowing, but for that uh, one is to to take away what is hindering or to take away what is what we have already filled in that cup, so that he can fill and the cup can overflow. Okay. So yeah, praise God for that. Sometimes we put, you know, it's like um, we say, okay, please, you know, serve, and uh, we just do that. But then if we put our hand there, <laughs> you know, it's uh, 
people can't actually pour in. And sometimes we do that, our own attitude of in all sincerity we want, but then we're doing something, you know, we are either fearful, we are either afraid, uh, you know, our attitude. So we, we actually, without knowing, we do that, right? Um, yeah, so yeah, there's a reminder of that. Okay, anyone else? Um, Take that hand off, right? Okay, praise God. Um, anyone else? So it, it need not be something visual. Okay, sometimes with oh, I didn't see like oh, Ranchin, so like Ranchin said or like Prince. I just felt something, and I'm not even sure whether it's God or not. How can I share? Please share. <laughs> okay, anybody feeling like that? Uh, Saint Francis. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Uh, who else? Vijay, Anand, Shira. Trying to recollect the names. Vimal, huh? Then Nishant, huh? Nikhil, Nikhil. Sri Radha, uh, Nina. Anyone? Online folks. Okay. Um, yeah, something here. Okay, let me just read out. Uh, from Jachin Joel. Okay. I'm so much thankful to God for his love. I was filled with the Holy Spirit and his presence was around me in my home. God broke the barriers within my heart and I'm determined to live the way he wants me to live, reflecting his love for me to those around and even to people who do not accept me. His power will enable and sustain me. Thanking God for his assurance and supernatural peace I receive now. Praise God. Thank you, jo Joel, for uh, sharing that. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Okay, maybe two more minutes, and then we'll uh, jump right in. Anyone? Um, Shira, anything? No. Okay. Okay. So, so whenever we, uh, you know, of course, when we pray, we pour out our hearts, right? We tell the Lord uh, what we want. We tell the Lord uh, who He is, right? And also, uh, we can take time to be mindful of what He is uh, putting in us. Right? It's a communication is always two ways, right? It's a it's a two way lane. It's never one way, right? So we can be mindful of that and say, okay, God. What are you telling me? What are you speaking to me? Uh, because the Lord wants to do that, right? Um, okay, so uh, like what I saw was like something like a reverse rain. You know, rain always comes from top to bottom, like top down, uh, from the sky to the earth, uh, and then does a lot of things here on the earth, right? So, but I saw something like a reverse rain in the sense, uh, even as all of us were like praying, uh, you know, quietly, softly, uh, like going up like rain. And something like a you know, like reversing a video, no, like like up like rain. So I just saw that um, like things going up to heaven, um, and the, and the Lord, and, and I was just thinking, and the Lord responding to that with His the rain of His presence, you know, but receiving and then you know uh, sending the rain of His presence, and also sense that um, Lord bringing to maturity uh, certain things in. Um, in people's lives, right, uh, bringing to maturity, uh, bringing to completion. You know, not all aspects of our lives, but some aspects of our life, and the Lord doing that in the sense that. Okay. Anyone else? No. Okay. Let's uh, let's uh, go right in into today's class, right? So today, uh, online students, I've actually uploaded two books: um, a Baptism of the Holy Spirit and Wonderful Benefits of Praying in Tongues. So you can download that on your, uh, you know, uh, on your personal devices, and so that you can access it. Um, and others, um, you have the books here, uh, physical copies. No, not yet. Okay, um, okay, you may have it on top. You can, you know, pick it up later between the two classes when you have a break. Um, but anyway, let let me just uh, so. Yeah, so we'll use content from that um, book, both written by Pastor Pastor Ashish, right? So this is about the whole aspect of um, baptism with the Holy Spirit, right? So we need to understand that uh, from a point of okay, what what does the Bible say about baptism of the Holy Spirit? Okay, we've uh, you know, and you know, coming from charismatic backgrounds and all that, we've always heard this, 
Uh, but it's it's good to you know uh, study and see what does the Bible uh, talk about it, scriptural background for it, right? What it is and what it's not, so we know the difference. And also why, why baptism of the Holy Spirit. Right, um, and uh, you know we're going to look at that, and uh, we are also going to look at you know what does it result in? Okay, what did the Lord intend for us uh, when He said, "Okay, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit." You know, uh, you receive the promise of the Father. What did the Lord intend for us? And uh, and you know some of those things, right? And also about uh, praying in tongues and so on, why tongues and all that. So um, so let's look into that. Okay, so first of all. Um, the Lord, uh, it, it was John the Baptist uh, who, when we see in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11, okay, you can turn there. Um, yeah, of course, you can follow in the notes also, you know, some of those things are there, but in the book, it's a little more um, sequential. Right? Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. Okay, so this is what John the Baptist says. He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing hand, fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Okay, so this is something that we see where John the Baptist, who was actually baptizing people in water, he says, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm baptizing you people in water, and this is a baptism of repentance, a sign of that. But there is one who's coming who's mightier than me. He's referring to the Lord because the rest of the chapter talks about that. And uh, and where he says, you know, he, uh, uh, he uh, the Lord Jesus comes and then, you know, uh, and all that, uh, we, we read the rest of the chapter. So here he's talking about this baptism. And he's talking about how the Lord Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so it's a different kind of a baptism. And uh, what we need to, um, uh, you know, be mindful of is this. Um, he, he says this. You know, when you consider this phrase, verse eleven, I indeed baptize you with water, but he who's coming uh, after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that word baptize. Baptize, baptizo in Greek, means to immerse. Okay, to immerse completely. And uh, people who actually uh, were, uh, you know, dying of garments, right? So they would use that term, dying of garments, meaning, okay, if you want to, you know, take a white garment and then make it into a different color, so there would be a liquid, right? Liquid color, liquid dye. They would immerse that garment completely in that dye, and when it comes out, it comes out in, in a different color. You know, it could go in white, but it come out red or whatever. So, um, so immerse completely. That's the picture. That's the picture. You know, so baptizo, meaning immerse completely. So, baptize with the Holy Spirit. So, in the Greek, you know, that word, that preposition, um, Greek with, can be translated as in or off or by. Okay, so. Um, you know, so sometimes we we get a little get caught up in those, you know, in the usage of the words. You know, baptize with. You know, how can you say baptize in or baptize by being baptized of the Holy Spirit? You know, the thing is that the Greek actually usage can be translated into all these ways in English. Okay, so baptize with, baptize in. You know, you don't have to be troubled. You know, it's the same thing. Right? So it's a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so John the Baptist announced this, and he said, the Lord Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. So he's talking about the baptism. He's talking about an experience. He's talking about what the Holy Spirit would do. And he says that it is a work of cleansing. Right? Fire, just like how fire burns, says he will do this. Right? It's a work of cleansing. Okay, Then the Lord Jesus also said something like this. No, when you go to Luke chapter 24, okay, Luke chapter 24, verse 48. Okay, let's look 24 verses 48 and 49. Okay, it says, You are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. 
okay but tarry in the city of jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high okay so john is uh, i mean here when you see the lord is saying okay you wait for the promise of my father and uh, you wait in jerusalem till you are endued or filled or surrounded with power from on high okay then let's turn to acts chapter 1 okay acts chapter 1 verse um verses 4 and 5 okay acts chapter 1 verse 4 and being assembled together with them okay he commanded them who commanded them jesus the lord jesus commanded his disciples not to depart from Jerusalem. Now, this is after the resurrection, right? Not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Okay, so he's referring to, he's using this phrase, promise of the Father. And he says, okay, you have heard from me. You have heard me speak about this. Okay, so, so when did they hear him speak about this? During his earthly ministry. Right, during his earthly ministry, the Lord. And uh, where do we see that? The Lord speaking to them and talking to them about the promise of the Father. Right, where, where do we see that in the Gospels? Anyone? Huh? Yeah, where do we see in the Gospels where the Lord Jesus talks about this promise of the Father? Of course, one one we see in Luke chapter twenty four, verse forty forty nine, but uh, he says, "No, this promise of the Father, which you have heard from me." Where else did he uh, speak? Yeah, in the in the book of John, right? In the Gospel of John, he uh, the Lord Jesus makes several references to the Holy Spirit about the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, starting from John chapter uh, fourteen, uh, he says. I will pray the Father, 14 and verse 16. I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world uh, cannot receive. Because, you know, several references, like uh, verse 16 talks about that. And then we go down to um, uh, verse 25, 26, 27, right? It talks about the Holy Spirit and several other places. So he's reminding them. The promise of the Father, which I actually which you heard from me, right? And he's saying, This is what will happen. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now, but wait in Jerusalem. So, even before that, what has happened is the Lord Jesus, uh, we read about this in um, uh, Matthew chapter, um, um, sorry, where's that reference? Um, John chapter 20, right? The Lord's, and after the resurrection, he meets them and he, and he breathes upon them. He breathes upon them and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. So here he's saying, you will receive the promise of the Father. You will be endued with power on high. You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And after his resurrection, he's, you know, he's breathed on them and he's, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So something is happening right in the lives of the believers. They have been receiving from the Lord. You know, many things have been exciting things are happening. Okay. So we, we can see that, okay, they... After his resurrection, they received the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. They were born again, right? For them to be born again, the Lord Jesus has had to be, you know, had to die and rise again. Right? He rose again. He defeated sin. He, he, you know, destroyed the body of sin. So now that you know the body of sin in their life, sin has no hold over them, no power over them. That has been dealt with. Okay, and he breathed on them and said, "Receive the Holy Spirit." So they have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, these are followers of the Lord Jesus, right? Then he says, you wait, you wait, and then I will baptize. So the purpose of the Lord to baptize them was to be this, that they will have power to witness. Okay, so we need to understand why baptism, why at all baptism, what is the objective? This is the intention that his disciples, his followers of the Lord Jesus, you and I, will have power, will be, in, will be clothed with power to witness. Okay, so that's the intention. Second one, what John the Baptist said, 
that he will do the work of refining. He will do the work of refining. He'll burn away the chaff. He'll gather the wheat. There, was, there is a, you know, like how fire refines. Therefore, the baptism also, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there is a work of refining. There's a work of cleansing. There's a work of purifying that happens. Okay, so it's twofold, right? So what is the objective? One is to receive power in order to witness, be a witness, right? Second one, purifying, cleansing work as believers, right? The Lord cleansing us. So, um, so the intent, the objective is that, okay, purifying also so that we can be witnesses, okay? So when we turn to the book of Acts, we see several instances, starting from Acts chapter two, I mean, Acts chapter two in the early church where the disciples had gathered, several instances or several uh, situations where people were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay, that people were baptized with the Holy Spirit, and we need to know that. Okay, what happened when they were baptized? What were the what was the situation? Who were these people? How did they, you know, how were they baptized with the Holy Spirit? Okay, so we need to know that. So we're going to look at that. Okay, um, let's look at um, uh, Acts chapter two. Okay, Acts chapter two. I'm sure we've read this many, many, many times. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Okay, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Right? So this is what happened. So something very supernatural, something, um, you know, uh, something amazing. Uh, and it's like you see something happening in the environment itself, the atmosphere itself. There came a sound from heaven, rushing mighty wind. It filled the whole house. There were divided tongues of fire on each head it's like you can can you just imagine you know like okay here everything is closed um there's not much ventilation and, and all that the fans are not on but then there's a sound of a mighty rushing wind filling the whole a whole room and on top of that something that we can see okay, tongues of fire flames of fire on each person's head and they were all filled with the holy spirit Okay. Now, this is what the Lord Jesus said. He, he, he didn't say, okay, you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be, he said, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay, And they were all filled. So, which means being filled with the Holy Spirit, being baptized in the Holy Spirit is the, the same thing. Like the, It's used interchangeably here. Right? Okay, so we see that they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, they began to speak in other tongues, meaning they began to you know, speak in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, So they were being clothed with the Holy Spirit, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they were speaking in other languages, other tongues, and uh, as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance, which means that the Holy Spirit gave them the words and they spoke it out. Okay, So they spoke uh, in other tongues. Okay, Now, it was a harvest festival, the feast of the first fruits, feast of Pentecost. Everything was, you know, happening one after the other, and uh, we see that in Jerusalem, people had come to celebrate this feast. Okay, people from the surrounding regions uh, who spoke, uh, you know, other languages, they were all there. And when this happened, right, they were amazed. You know, we see different reactions, right? Some were amazed; they marveled. How can this be? You know, these are Jews. And they're speaking my language, right? It's as if I suddenly started speaking in Telugu, and Anand is like, wow, Pastor, <laughs> what do you say in, how do you say in Telugu, wow? <laughs> okay, he's like, oh, I'm amazed. You know, you, you're speaking Telugu fluently. How can this be? You know, you, I know that you don't know the language, but then how, how did this happen? So that's the same reaction. They marveled, right? They were amazed. They were also perplexed. 
meaning troubled. How can this be? How, how is this happening? What is this due to? And some, of course, they heard the languages and then they said these people are drunk. Right? They were they, they just mocked, they ridiculed, they made fun of them and said they are drunk. So it sounded like that. It sounded like okay, some drunk people speaking. It sounded like that. It sounded you know so everything was happening at that time, and and this is what we see, and we see this in Acts chapter two. Um, uh, you know, we uh, let me just read that right. Uh, how is it that we hear verse eight? How is it that we hear each in our own language? in which we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, adjoining Cyrene, you know, Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Verse 12, so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking said they are full of new wine. Okay, so this was the reaction, and uh, it's uh, it is recorded for us here. So when all this happened, Peter stands up, uh, Acts chapter two, fourteen to eighteen. Okay, Peter stands up and he says something. He addresses the crowd, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, "Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words." But these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. So he's referring to another incident or another a prophecy that was made by the prophet Joel. He's referring to the Old Testament scriptures, the scriptures of those times. And he's saying, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall see shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Okay, so prophesying is to speak forth as inspired by the Holy Spirit. Okay, there are very many elements to it prophesying but simply put it is this god speaking to man through man right so they were prophesying what were they saying they were actually declaring the wonderful works of god okay and and peter saying this is what it is mm -hmm. they the lord the, the the prophet declared this we see the completion of that or we see the actual you know uh, working out of that and they are filled with the holy spirit they are not drunk they are filled with the holy spirit and as a result of that this is what you see. This is what you hear. Okay, so so something we see that um, as a result of baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, he's talking about dreams. He's talking about visions. He's talking about prophecy. So we know that it can be an overflow of that. Right? As a, as a result of baptism of the Holy Spirit, we can we can expect that. And as a result of being filled with the Holy Spirit, we can expect that because God wants to do that. God wants to release that. Right? Dreams, prophecies, visions. Well, it comes with that. So we don't we don't need to restrict God and say, okay, it can happen only this way. You know, no. And they all spoke in tongues as well. So we, we see that. Okay. Um, and then he says uh, in verse thirty eight, okay, verse thirty eight and thirty nine. What does he say? Then Peter said to them, repent, because they ask, you know, what should we do? Um, then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as our Lord our God will call. So if there is a question, you know, this baptism of the Holy Spirit was only for the New Testament early yeah. church. Uh, it's not for others. Oh, um, it, it could, you know, some of these questions could come up. You know, it was only then the Lord did it sovereignly. It's only then it's not anymore. But, you know, Peter puts to rest any such question. You know, it's to you, it's to your children, the next generation, and to those who are afar off, people who are not here. Right? They are, and as any, as, as many as our Lord will call. 
Okay, so it's talking about Jerusalem, Judea, ends of the earth, uttermost parts of the earth. Everyone is included in this, right? It is to it is for all. Okay, this baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, okay, so uh, what is the intention? What is the objective? It is to witness with power. Okay, so in the witnessing with power, we need to understand this witnessing with power. You know. Uh, what is your understanding of it? Okay, let me ask you first. Witnessing with power. Okay, we received baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's given us the ability to witness with power. Okay. Does it mean that I need to speak with loudly, boldly? Um, the gospel? What is it? What do you think? Witnessing with power. Anyone? With boldness, fearless. Okay, without any hesitation, not being ashamed, not being shy. Anyone? Anyone else? Huh? Live for God, a life that is abandoned totally for Him. Yes. What else? Anybody from the online? Class, what do you think? This witnessing with power. Now, this is the way in which um, the the apostles actually gave witness, right? Um, so, is there more to it? No, all these responses are correct, right? With boldness, without holding back, living an abandoned life, fearless. Yeah, absolutely. But is there more to it? What do you think? Huh? Yeah. So that's that's the other aspect of it. In the sense, whenever the apostles, you know, when we read the book of Acts, whenever the apostles, uh, it says they gave witness with power, and it talks about, you know, uh, let me just read. Um, okay. So verse forty-three. You know, Acts. We 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 read eight, thirty-eight and thirty-nine promises to you and to your uh, and to your children right then when we read uh, 43 then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles many signs many wonders so where the signs and wonder how are the how are these possible how was this possible because the lord jesus already said that you know if you believe you will be if you if you will be doing this he already said that. He also said that it is to this whole thing of baptism of the Holy Spirit, infilling of the Holy Spirit, it is so that you might be filled with power. Okay. And so when they give witness, when we say, you know, to be witnesses, to be clothed with power, it is to be giving witness with the manifestation of the power of God. Right? Living a righteous life, life of integrity and holiness. Yes. It is the power of God, transformative power of God. You know, living a life uh, or giving witness with supernatural works of God, right? Where God meets the need of people, whether it's healing or, you know, when there's a discouragement situation and the, the Lord brings in a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom where the person, you know, begins to share or begins to share an information to another person which this person has no idea about that person but the holy spirit who knows everything reveals and you share right? that is witnessing with power right where you witness with the power of god right? you, and you're giving witness you're saying this is god it's not me but is god and god who knows everything is actually revealing he knows you he knew you and he is revealing this to you that this is how you were and this is what he wants to do in your life. So there is a witness right there. There's a testimony right there. And it's with power. Right. And that's what happened, you know, when they when they started speaking in tongues. It's it's not to display, put on spiritual display, you know, uh, something like a trophy. Oh, I received this. No, it was actually witnessing in power, the supernatural works of God. What? God, this infinitely supernatural, this wonder-working God can do through a finite person. 
a finite human being whose life is turned over to God. Right? So the Lord Jesus wanted that to happen to all his, wants that to happen to all his believers, right? all his followers, all his disciples, that we would give witness with power. Right? So, okay. The uh, anointing will be moved to make a decision. Yes. Yes, you know, yeah. So that's the that's the thing, you know. It's um, so power includes all that, you know, the transformative life, the testimony, the you know, convicting power of the Holy Spirit, and uh, truth being enlightened, and all these other manifestations of the uh, power of the because of the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Okay, so that was the first thing. Okay, so let's move on to the second instance. Okay, so these things, you know, you, you should you should be in your heart. Okay? Acts chapter two. Acts chapter eight, all these things, you know, we, we all these, you know, instances that happen, uh, we, we should really know it. Okay, so let's move to Acts chapter uh, eight. Okay, so Acts chapter eight and uh, verses twelve to nineteen. Okay, Acts chapter eight. What happens in Acts chapter eight? Okay, just a quick recap. The um, there's a lot of uh, persecution. That happens after the martyrdom of Stephen, right? Chapter seven is all about that. Stephen shares the message. Uh, he's stoned. He's put to death. Saul. We see Saul being introduced there. Saul is standing there. He was taking care of actually all the cloaks and everything. He's consenting to the death. And after that, we see that Saul is creating a havoc. Right? He's persecuting the church. He's doing all that, um, and people are scattered. And, and one such place where uh, this persecution happens is, of course, in Jerusalem it happens, and Philip and others they go to this place called Samaria because of the persecution. Philip shares the gospel in Samaria. People are born again in Samaria. Right? People start to follow the Lord. They actually, they, it says here that um, if you look at Acts chapter eight and verse seven, for unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. So what was Philip doing? He was actually giving witness with power there. Right? And it says, as a result of all this, verse 8, there was great joy in the city. Right? People who were in bondage, they are being set free, they have come to the saving knowledge of Christ, and there was great joy in that city. Okay. Um, now let's go on to... Uh, uh, verse, uh, verse twelve, right? Do we have time? Okay, let's uh, uh, let's take a break, and then once we come back, we'll continue with verse twelve to nineteen, Acts chapter eight. Okay, we'll take a break right.